Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and triangles of all ages. Welcome to another video. And today, I think this is a little bit obvious just by looking at my screen directly in front of you. I am going to talk about accessories because a lot of people have seen me talking about accessories in my unit guide and they're like, where did you get this? Where did you get that? I don't have this, I don't have that. So here we go, I'm gonna talk about it. Just one thing before I get started, I am doing a stream with a couple of friends tomorrow night at Saturday 3 p.m. EST and we are going to be playing some Mario Kart. So if you guys are new to the channel and you're not familiar with our group, it is very fun and very funny, so stop by. I'll be streaming it here and we'll also be streaming on a bunch of different people's channels if you want to look out for that. Anyways, that's it for my self-plugging. Unfortunately, I do have to plug myself. That's just kind of how YouTube works. Otherwise, they won't tell you about it. But we're going to move on to talking about accessories. And I went ahead and assembled a spreadsheet just so that I know where everything is and I can talk about it. And we're going to start off with talking about the movement bangle. This is an accessory that, as you can see by the description, is fairly self-explanatory. It increases your movement by one. This is a great item on a lot of people. I used it on Archibald because he seems to have kind of low movement and it helps out with his range. But you can really use this on whatever unit you want. It's basically whoever you feel like is not keeping pace. You could put, probably put it on Eridor, even though there's other things that I like more on him. You can put it on your Roland to give him even more movement if that's what you want to do, or any of your calves, really. Just any unit that you feel is lagging behind in terms of movement you give them the movement bangle. Now, this one is fairly straightforward. You get it in chapter 11, which I believe is the Roselle village, and you can find it right behind Frederica. So that's the movement bangle. Fairly straightforward, not much more to say about it. And just to note, I'm not gonna go over every single accessory in the game. I'm only going to go over sort of the unique accessories or the accessories that you can't buy from shops. So if you're watching this and you're like, hey, you know, you didn't go over this or that or whatever, Odds are you can buy that from a shop at some point in the game. I'm just going over the stuff that you have to find in exploration or you get as chapter rewards. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and skip over all these elemental amulets. I never use these, so, you know, make of them what you will. But we will go to an extremely useful item that you get very early on, and that is the Vanguard Scarf. This guarantees you the first action at the start of the battle, and you find this as early as chapter 4 in the mines, the Dragan chapter in the exploration. You get it very early, it is one of the best accessories in the game. You should not be playing a single chapter without using this item. You can put this on anyone you want, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the Vanguard Scarf not only guarantees you first action at the start of the battle, it also seems to just put you at the top of the acting order for all of the subsequent turns in the battle. So if this unit is going to go first at the start of this turn, they will go first at the start of every single turn. It's so good. In my experience, support units have the best time with it, so I used it on my Medina. I used it on Kohog a lot when I was trying to cheese maps. I used it on my Benedict. Anyone who gives you that big advantage buffs, boosts, you know, helps mitigate turn order, decrease damage, healers, whatever you feel like will be useful as the first action of a turn before all of your other units go, Vanguard Scarf. I maybe wouldn't recommend it on like your big heavy DPS units because you could probably put a more damaging item on them and maybe you want to buff them up with someone else here, but this is a superb item, fantastic item. Up next is the red scarf and this one recovers HP when you defeat an enemy. I struggled a little bit using this because the number of enemies on a map is usually that not that high and the units killing enemies are usually your nukers who aren't necessarily taking damage. So I didn't really make too much use of this, but this can be used fairly successfully on any sort of frontline brawler type of unit. Someone like Groma, if you really want to make use of her. Maybe Eridor, if you find your Eridor is killing things. Potentially Julio, if Julio is killing things. You know, units like that who might come in and deal a finishing blow, but also might take a little bit of damage. Flanagan could be another one here. This might help him, although there's an item and a little bit that works better with Flanagan, I would say. But I didn't get terribly much use out of this. Anna might be good with Red Scarf because she tends to attack twice. Units like that, who, more so melee units that will take a beating. There's also a couple spoiler, spoiler units that would make use of this that I won't mention. But yeah, that's the Red Scarf for you. After that is Rear Guard's Cloak. Oh, I forgot to mention where you get Red Scarf. Red Scarf is in Chapter 7. 
and you get this if you choose to save Roland. So you can't give away Roland, otherwise you will not get the red scarf. It is in Wolfort Castle, and it's in a house behind Hewet hidden in the shelves somewhere. So if you missed it, that's where you get it. You just gotta go search for it. There's like a little twinkle, and you'll, you'll just hit A and you'll find it. Rearguard's Cloak is another one that is exclusive to saving Roland, and this one is in the chapter after that, which is chapter 8, and I believe... I believe chapter 8 is also still Wolfort Castle, and you get this one in... right near the entrance of the castle. It's by a tree right at the start where the stone steps are, leading up to that house right at the very beginning and you just gotta search on that sort of entry area. And what Rearguard's Cloak does is it decreases damage taken when hit from behind. I actually think this item is garbage, and I'll tell you why. Because when you're getting hit from behind, the multiplier for damage is times 1.3. It decreases that damage multiplier to 1.04, so you're still taking a little bit damage from behind, but it's nowhere near as good as something like the Steelback skill that Eridor has. So I don't know, it can save you from taking damage from behind, but the units who would need that, I mean, maybe you can combo this with Steelback to kind of try and lure in units, but I don't like this item and I really don't think the damage reduction is that good. It should have been like a flat rate of decreases damage taken when hit from behind by 50%, for example. You can use so many other better items to lower damage or get some utility that I just don't like this one. But if you see have seen like use for it, let me know. After that is the Red Anklet. You find this in Chapter 9, which is, again, in Wolfort Castle. It's during the voting phase. Chapter 9, all of your units are back together anyways. And if you remember Wolfort Castle, sort of, you go all the way down the steps, and there's a, a dude standing next to, like, a shield on the side. If you check that shield, that's where you'll find it. And this increases strength and magic attack for three turns when you defeat an enemy. This is pretty good. You can put this on any nuker you want, and you will get that buff for three turns. Very, very useful item. I can't remember exactly what the strength or magic attack buff is, but this is a pretty easy one to activate on any of your units that are finishing off or dealing finishing blows. So it's pretty good for the start. You could also opt for one of the, you know, standard strength or magic boosting items, but I think this one will probably be stronger than those in the early game. So again, fairly straightforward. You can put this on your mages, your archers, Serenoa, Roland, any one of your DP high DPS characters should make great use of this and just deal a lot more damage over the next couple of turns. After this, we have the Bangle of Vitality. Now, this one is also a Chapter 9 reward. You only get this one if you choose to smuggle the salt or assist Sorcely in his illicit salt trade. And what this one does is it basically grants you a little bit of HP at the start of your turn. And when they say little, they mean a little. It's about 50. 50 in the grand scheme of the amount of damage that you're taking is really not that much. But this can be paired up with anything like a regen. It stacks. Flanagan has a regen skill that also gives him another 50 at the start of his turn. So 50 and 50 is 100. But again, if you're taking damage, you're usually taking upwards of 100 damage per turn. And so I don't know if this little HP regen is really worth that much in the long run. So that's just my take on the Bangle of Vitality. I wouldn't go out of your way to get this. It's nice, but it's, I mean, I would rather use a, a flat strength boost or, or a flat defense boost because it will over time probably decrease the damage taken more than the HP restored from this. After that, I'm going to talk about the Grounding Amulet, and I know I said the Grounding Amulet, or I wasn't going to talk about things that you can buy, but the Grounding Amulet is fairly interesting because you do find it during exploration. It is also in Chapter 11, which is the Roselle Village, and this item prevents you from getting knocked back. You can also get this in Chapter 10, but only if you decide to report the Salt Trade, and also only if you fail to find all the evidence against Sorcely. So you have to go to the Trial in front of the Saintly Seven, and if you pass the trial, they will give you a grounding amulet as a reward. Because the chapter after that is on an elevated high-rise arena, and you can get pushed off of it into traps. So this would help you not get pushed off, pretty much. Useful item, but very, very situational. It's nice for things like choke pointing with some of your tanks if you really want your tank not to get knocked back. Or to sort of survive things like wind damage not knocking you back into your allies. You'll still take a lot of damage from the magic, but you won't get knocked into your allies. So there you go, that's also fairly straightforward. The Resurrection Earring. This is probably by far 
the most useful item in the entire game. It automatically revives your wearer once per battle. If you look at your characters and you're like, oh man, I wish I kind of had double the HP I had, that's your resurrection earring. As soon as your unit goes down, it'll revive them again. Now the caveat is, is say that your unit is surrounded by two characters from either side. So they're about to get doubled, for example. You're attacked from the front. If you get revived, the unit behind you will still follow up. So it does not prevent any combat that is ongoing from taking effect. It doesn't prevent any terrain effects. It will remove any status effects you have on you, be they positive or be they negative status effects. So if you're tempted, if you're paralyzed, if you're asleep, it'll remove it and revive you normal. But if you're buffed, the buffs will also go away. So if you have more HP, more strength, more magic, more movement, more whatever, you will lose all of that when you revive. And there are two instances you can get this resurrection earring. You can only get one of them per playthrough, but eventually, like this is four playthroughs in, this, this file here, and you can see I have two resurrection earrings. And that's because you get one in chapter 11, but only if you save the Roselle. Actually, no, scratch that. You get one in chapter 11. If you save the Roselle, that's where you get the first one. If you give up the Roselle, you'll get it in chapter 12. And this is because it's a drop from Rufus or Tellior that battle. So that's where the Resurrection Earring comes from. Highly useful skill, use it on your tanks, use it on your DPSs. I would put it on Serenoa a lot. I would put it on Eridor. Eridor is invincible with this thing. Like, he's already tanky enough, and you give him the Resurrection Earring and he comes back again. That man did not die in my first playthrough. It was amazing. Okay, Obsidian Anklet. This is something you get pretty late, and honestly, preventing natural TP recovery is a pretty big negative, but it does increase your strength and magic attack by 5, which is massive. And one really cool thing you can do with the Obsidian, Obsidian Anklet is you can put it on Decimal, because Decimal already does not have natural TP recovery anyways, so he'll get all the upsides without the downside. So there's a really easy combo for the Obsidian Anklet. You get it in chapter 16, which is the mines again, and it's a little bit northeast of where Gila is standing. I also like this a lot for quick farming. You can put this on someone like a Frederica if you're farming the arena map or you're farming the uh, dual map with you and with the enemies all bunched up and you want to nuke with Sunfall. You can use the Obsidian Anklet because odds are your combat if you're farming is not going to last for more than one turn. So who cares about the TP recovery anyways? Otherwise, you can put it on any other unit you want as long as you pair them with a TP buffer, but you shouldn't really need to put this on anyone. I, I rarely used it, but it is strong for farming. I liked it for farming. The Endurance Earring is an item I got asked about a lot. Now, I had a very, I mean, let, let's say unconventional first run through the game, and I got this on my first playthrough. Basically, in order to get this, you need to give up the Roselle in Chapter 11, and then go visit the Roselle in the Chapter 15 split. This will take you into a specific part of their village, and even though that Chapter 15 branches into two separate paths, the only path that has the Endurance Earring, for some reason, is the path where the village is empty because you gave the Roselle up first time around. So that's the one I went down. Probably doesn't make sense, but this is a huge item. It's basically Desperate Defense, which decreases damage taken when your HP is at 50% or below. Now, I've been told that the damage reduction is by 50%, which is massive. I put this on Eridor with the Resurrection Earring, and he just did not die. He would take so many hits and stay there and just not die. You can use this Endurance Earring Resurrection Earring combo on pretty much anyone you want to make them really, really tanky and just sit there below 50% HP which is a nice sweet spot for some units they have who have HP thresholds, hint, hint. But yeah, I really like this item. Unfortunate you only get one of it. I would love to use that combo on more than one unit, but it's really good for your tanks. It's also pretty good for your DPS unit. It's good on anyone, really. Like, this is a great item. After that is the Black Anklet, and this increases strength, magic attack, physical defense, magic defense, but does damage to you at the start of your turn. I like this on my mages, because even though magic attack, it only increases everything by three, it can make the difference between making you two shottable, but also give you a fairly significant damage boost with the three magic attack. It's, it's a good item all round, but because of the damage over time element of it, you don't really want it on your frontliners, like no tanks, tanks don't need this, tanks can use other things, but this is mostly damage dealer stuff. So yeah, and where you find the black anklet is chapter 13, 
and it's during the voting phase, also Castle Wolfort, and it's near the yellow stall at the marketplace, kind of close to where one of the Wolfort soldiers is. So if you search those areas, that's where you'll find that. Next up is the gold pinky ring. I know this isn't exploration based. You can actually get this fairly early on just in your normal encampment shop. And you buy it, I think for 5,000 gold and it just increases the chances of enemies dropping spoils when defeated. This is a great item for farming. So if you need to farm some stuff out, equip this on your AOE nuker and enemies will drop items like hotcakes. It's, it's a fantastic item. So I would use this and the obsidian anklet with Frederica and she would just destroy things on very easy and items everywhere that you can send Lionel to pick up for more money. Yay! I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on farming methods, there's like a ton of them out there, but if you guys are really, really curious, I guess I could do like a two minute tutorial on what my setup is. I don't know, let me know in the comments. But that's Golden Pinky Ring, there you go, we're almost done. Yeah, okay, I wanna talk about Amulet of Immunity before the Plume of Immortality. So the Amulet of Immunity, you see this on Avlora during the story and it grants immunity to all status ailments. You get this fairly late in chapter 15 and it's by the fountain in front of the giant tree. I think this is in Whiteholm Castle, if I remember correctly. And honestly, I don't think this is a great item. I did not run into status ailments as much as I thought I would. Final Fantasy and Square Enix in general love to make their ribbon items very broken, but status wasn't a big issue in my playthrough, so let me know if it was for you. But yeah, that's where you get your Amulet of Immunity. This is good on anyone who you think is suffering from status ailments, but I personally never use this. And last but not least is Plume of Immortality. This item is hilarious. The way you get this is by having a deathless run. An entire run without a single unit dying. I'm pretty sure Resurrection doesn't count. Don't quote me on this, but I'm fairly certain it doesn't. But you can't lose a single unit. So if a unit dies during a map, you can restart that map and you'll be fine. But it's a New Game Plus only reward. You get it right before your final save. So you don't have to start the chapter to get it. You get it before your final save moving into New Game Plus. And what it is, is it's a 50% chance of revival after falling in battle every single time. It's not a one use only. It's every time you die, you have a 50% chance of coming back. Hilarious. Actually really funny. I haven't tested this because I literally only just got it, but it's, it's a reward for doing a deathless run. So there you go. I think this works on anyone as well that keeps dying, but the resurrection earring is way more reliable. So yeah, that's all of the accessories. I think I went into them in depth enough. If you have any more questions, ask away in the comments, and maybe I'll see you guys at the stream tomorrow. Who knows? Come by. It'll be fun. But yeah, that's about it. I think this might be my last guide, unless you guys have any more ideas you want me to cover. After this, I'm sort of transitioning into more analysis content. So I wanna talk about the story. I wanna talk about the characters. I wanna talk about the plot, stuff like that. I think I wanna review the game, actually give it a proper review. So tons and tons and tons of triangle strategy content to come. Like, share, subscribe, all that amazing stuff. And I'll see you guys in another video very, very soon. Peace.